All right, hi everybody, my name's Maddie. I'm Zara. And I'm Maria, and we're the presidents of LHS's Intersectional Feminism Club. So, we know that feminism is the advocacy for the social, political, and economic equality of the sexes. But before we start, we think it's important to recognize that not every feminist is white, middle class, cisgendered, straight, and able-bodied. Intersectional feminism recognizes that not everyone experiences oppression in the same way. There's varying configurations and different intensities. Examples of this include race, gender, sexuality, class, ability, and ethnicity. Some of them are on our picture right back here. As a club to us, it's important that we create, a, that we advocate and create a safe space for discussion that is relevant to everyone. With this being said, we want to acknowledge that a lot of our statistics pertain only to men and women, um, but we understand that not everybody identifies with these two genders. Today we want to address some misconceptions about harassment in LHS and some things we're trying to change. So to start off, we're going to talk to you um, and ask you guys about um, a few questions. Alright, so raise your hand if you think that everyone should have the same opportunities regardless of their gender identity. Raise your hand if you've ever heard someone else call someone a slut. Raise your hand if you didn't do anything about it. Raise your hand if anyone has ever said something about gender roles that made you feel uncomfortable or restricted. Raise your hand if you've ever judged someone solely based on what they're wearing. Raise your hand if you know someone who has been affected by sexual harassment or sexual assault. You may not think you know someone, but the chances are that sometime in your lifetime you will. One in five women and one in 33 men will be victims of rape in their lifetime. That's 10% of the people that you see every day in class, in the halls, or even right here in this room. Those of you who have orange cards, please stand up. Uh, you got an orange card when you came in. It might not be you personally, but you guys represent the fraction of people in this room who at some point in their life will experience rape. If so many people are affected by this, Shouldn't we think a little more about how we speak? Don't be such a pussy. Boys will be boys. Man up. She has you whipped. He picks on you because he likes you. You're going to distract the boys. Don't be a slut. You'd be so much prettier if you smile. I hear these phrases thrown around LHS every single day, and all of them are microaggressions. But when we really think about what we're saying, this stuff is really creepy. Why do we think boys can't restrain themselves when they see, their sh when they see bare shoulders? Why do we tell little girls that harassment against them is their fault? When we call men pussies, we have, we're associating a part of a woman's body to something or someone being negative. A couple months ago, I was talking to a girl I know at LHS and she broke down into tears. How can somebody who has no respect for women be the leader of our country? She is a victim of sexual assault and she couldn't believe that someone who is so disrespectful towards women and their bodies could be the leader of our country. And I can't even imagine how that must feel for her. When we talk about rape culture, we're not only talking about sexual assault and sexual harassment itself, but also the language that perpetuates it. Many of us have heard the phrase locker room talk. Locker room talk excuses and normalizes the objectif objectification of women and praises men for their conquests. But what happens when you hear young kids talk about women in an offensive way and excuses as just locker room talk? I work as a lifeguard and I help to coach a co-ed swim team. And we've been hearing complaints for weeks that the boys in the boys' locker room, the boys on our team, have been making offensive comments about women and talking about which of the girls on their team had the best bodies. When we, when we and the coaches asked them about it, they said it was fine because it's just locker room talk. Often we pick up words and phrases from friends, family, and social media without giving any thought to what they actually mean. What we're really trying to get to here is that your language matters. What you say matters. You might not know who might be, be impacted by your joke. We hope what you'll do going forward is to be careful with the language you use, to educate others about the strength of their voice, and to speak up when you hear something insensitive or hurtful. You know we will. Thank you.